Hello and welcome to episode 13 of the Swim Run Show podcast. This week's guest is John Yelland from Mad Hatter Sports Events. John is still at the helm of Mad Hatter, uh, the only race, swim run race, to survive from 2015, which was the inaugural year of swim run racing in the UK. So well done, John, for that. Uh, we will have, we have a great chat with him actually soon. In fact, we carried on chatting for some time after recording. Um, I should have just carried on. Anyway, we didn't want to go on for too long. Uh, before that, though, it's four weeks till the start of the swim run show, swim run season, uh, starting in Liverpool with Swim Run Liverpool, the Eliminator. If you've not heard, it's a lap scenario, at two and a half kilometres per lap. That's two kilometres of running and five hundred metres of swimming split up into three runs and two swims uh, lap one you've got 25 minutes to do which i'm pretty sure everyone will will make that cut off and then lap two drops a couple of minutes etc etc into lap six so there's a potential to do 15 kilometers of swim running with uh three, 15 runs and 10 swims so lots of transition training. If you kind of experienced and you've done lots of swim running or you've done a bit and you just want to practice your swim run transitions, then it's a great season starter. Or if you've never done a swim run, it's perfect for you uh, because you know, it's the, the kind of format is very friendly. Um, speed wise, yeah, I expect everyone to get lap one in, probably almost everyone lap two and most people lap three and lap four it's just going to get a bit pointy at lap six i reckon so check it out link in show notes last thing before we crack on with our chat is the my swim run championships friendship battle it's starting soon the details are in the show notes in terms of the link it's all there guys uh, but it's basically a way to motivate training that's why i'm doing it it costs 10 euros some of that goes to charity some of it just goes to promotion of the sports and you can win prizes um teams we swim run i've got a team and you can join the team if you want i've currently got five people in the team there's a maximum of 10 people so five spaces available so sign up i'll link to it in the show notes and it all it's all explained there but basically you start your strava or your garmin go for a swim run come back upload it somewhere and it's done and the, in terms of how you get points or go up the, the leaderboard it's the, the distance you've done on your swim run it has to be a minimum of two swims and two runs of course concurrently you can't swim and then go to work and then run and then you know what you know what i mean <laughs> uh so there we go right john oh apologies the, there was a slight delay on the um the communication between myself and john occasionally during the podcast but it's i think i think it's okay so here we go john yelland all the way from cornwall on the coast the waves the swell the fish fish and chips Okay, so uh, John from Mad Hatter Sports Events over in Cornwall. How are you, John? Yeah, good, thanks, Mike. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting excited about 2024 season now. Uh, trying to work out what I can enter and what I can't enter. <laughs> that's, that's one of the troubles for an event organiser is that there's so many events I want to do locally and, oh, sorry, locally in the UK and and across Europe, but they all conflict with dates that I'm organizing yeah yeah it's horrendous yeah yeah, yeah. horrendous i know maybe we're the sun's in the, out the, so that's, yeah the sun's out yeah so here we go so john you've been organizing swim run for some time now coming up to 10 years uh how did it all start down in cornwall so um yeah it's a long time i've got to be honest and it's changed quite a lot in that time but uh, maybe we could talk about that in a bit but how we started was uh we were invited, we used to work with a, um, a, a triathlon shop in Newquay who were involved in all sorts of things. And one day they said to us, um, Newquay bid business improvement, something or whatever it is, uh, and, and surf lifesaving, Newquay surf lifesaving want to put an event on in Newquay to prove that Newquay can host the World Surf Lifesaving Championships. So this event was to kind of prove that Newquay, we could organize stuff in Newquay in the summer 
so they came to us and said, would you guys be interested in organizing the event? And we went, yeah, yeah, definitely. We'd really be interested. What have you got in mind? And they went, oh, we want to do a triathlon in Newquay in August. And we just went, uh, really? Cycling around Newquay in the middle of August? Uh, just no. So a few weeks prior to that meeting, I had, um, I think it was on Trans World Sport or TV program like that. I'd, I'd actually seen swim run. I, I'm pretty sure it was Attila World Championships in Sweden. And I, I thought, do you know what? We, well, could we do something like that? So the three of us who were in the business at the time got together and we, we set out an idea and took it back to the guys and they went, that'd be a great idea. We'd love it. Um, so we got involved with that and then we were involved with that for a few months and then all of a sudden we just it was just getting too political, too many parties involved. So the three of us had a meeting and we went, do you know what? It's just too difficult to do it in Newquay. We've got the perfect location in St. Austell Bay right. uh, to put one on. Um, should we just do it there? And um, the original event was called the Bay Hop, the Newquay Bay Hop. Oh. Uh, and then we came up with the idea of, of doing one in St. Austell. And then we were like, what should we call it? What should we call it? I don't know. And we went through all these ideas. and I, I can't remember who, meant, who, who brought the idea up. But they said, well, you're in now, in out. Well, there's the Hokey Cokey, and that's where the Hokey Cokey name came from. Right. So, yeah, Brilliant. that's how we started. And, that's cool. Uh, yeah, it's changed a bit. Yeah. So so before that, then, were you organising triathlons or down there? Or... No. Um, so the first year we did uh, just open water swimming. We did a, right. an open water swimming series. We did five swims in different locations. Uh, and, then yeah, it was the second year we kind of got into multi-sport and okay. then we did triathlons after that and other, other kinds of events after that. But, yeah, no, swim run was our first multi-sport. Okay, uh, cool. The first year was horrendous. In what, what, in what way? We set the course out. Because after that decision of um, we're going to move it from Newquay to St. Austell Bay, I think we had two months to, to do it because we set it for the September time. Mm. So we had two months to get it in, in, in and move in and entries and everything like that. Uh, so nothing like last minute. And the day of the race, we had, I think we had like 50 odd people turn up. And the day of the race, there was a strong onshore wind and quite a big swell. Uh, and Martin and John, who were the other partners in the business at the time, wouldn't let me go anywhere near the sea because they were, they were you know, I would, I would just stress about the whole thing. So yeah, it was, it was challenging conditions. And one girl broke a foot, funnily enough. Uh, she's never spoke to us again. Um, yeah, it was an interesting day and a very interesting day. Good stuff. <laughs> and that, that first year, actually, we, we, we decided not to let, not to have any rules at all. So you did, literally could do what you liked. You know, people were, people had three wetsuits that they'd been, had people on beaches with different wetsuits for them to put on between the run, after the runs and things like that. We just oh. let anybody do anything because we thought if we put, put too many rules in place, it's just going to scare too many people off. Mm. Uh, but it was a great day and people look back at it and go i think there's a video somewhere of it i'm mm -hmm. trying to dig it out oh it sounds brilliant it sounds brilliant and uh yeah i like that idea of letting people decide uh i guess down there you've got a good you've got a good kind of group of community of open water sea swimmer sea swimmers used to a bit of swell as well so and people who can make decisions on on conditions I guess, in the, in the early days, I suppose. I think, yes, we've got a good community of people who love a bit of swell. I mean, mm. the Cornish contingent, whenever the Cornish contingent go anywhere swimming or swim running uh, and it's flat, they're disappointed. Um, right. I mean, uh, we, did a, we did one of Chloe's races at Holly Island and uh, love swim run at Holly Island. And um, we, there was about 15 of us that went up from Cornwall to do it. And it was really bumpy. And we all just got out of the water going, that was epic. We want to do it yes. again. And I think most of everybody else got out going, I don't like it. I don't like that. <laughs> no, I, so, I... So, yeah, the Cornish continued yeah. a good in swimming. Yeah. No, I, I think I was it? there that year. Yeah, it was great. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. I mean, was it 2017 <laughs> or something like that? Yeah, it was really long. They like had that. to change yeah. the course. Um, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so... We loved it. Yeah. We loved it. But, no, I yeah, you've got and it. In terms it, of it the it's conditions, different, isn't it? Oh, sorry. That's something. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, in terms of the conditions, I think that's something that we'll, that we've learned over the time doing swimming and swim run. What conditions are possible, and not just possible for 
um, you know, when we first started doing open water swimming, me and John, who was one of the partners, we'd go and swim the course the day before or the morning of the day, of the race. And, you know, if we swam it and got round, you'd be like, oh, no, that's OK. But then you think you know, we were a little bit naive and had to, had to change that because whilst we could do it, other people maybe couldn't. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's something that we've learned over the years and we've put a lot of time and effort into studying charts and wind directions and things like that. So, Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely both from the participant point of view and, and race directors maybe more so. Organize, and I organized a lake, a lake swim run and a coastal one. And it's yeah, a hell of a lot of difference in terms of stress with the coastal condi- when the conditions are bad. Um, yeah, so big up to all the coastal team out there. <laughs> so, so did you? So you organized our, so that? Was our, just... our road, ro- yeah. No, go on, go on. There's a, there's a slight delay on the line. So I'm talking oh, over sorry. quite a bit, but that's fine. Yeah, so so we'll just that was wait. 2015. No, that's fine. Um, your first one, which John, it's the only, I think I mentioned before, yep. it's the only swim run event that happened in the UK in 2015 that is still going today. How about yeah, that? Yeah, uh, yeah, we, we had this conversation last time, didn't we? It's, a, it's yeah. um, that's quite an achievement, I think, to continue with it. Um, and it's grown, it's definitely grown. Um, it tailed off obviously because of COVID. I think if COVID hadn't happened, we would have maybe had a you know, a, a bit of a bigger pool of people, but yeah, that's quite scary. I, I mean, that first one we used football bibs for race bibs, uh, yeah. which was funny. Uh, that was that was what I think Chloe did the first couple of years as well. And yeah. it's what you had to use because you just couldn't afford to go and buy you know, yeah. ski bibs. Yeah, they're expensive. So, yeah, yeah, that's quite a, quite an achievement. I wish we should put that. We should yeah, put that should... on our tagline. The longest running. Yes, definitely, definitely. <laughs> it's, it is, you know, it's... Uh, so the 2015, there was Breca Buttermere, the first in the UK. Then um, Scotland, uh, Loch Lomond, Alan Anderson, I think, put on one, and uh, Stuart McInnes up there in um, Loch Gulock, and yourselves. And and all of those have yeah. gone by the wayside, apart from um, the St. Hostel Bay one, so well done, John. And I think, did you do Buttermere that year? Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't that year. It was the following year, I think, we did it. Okay. Um, because I think we, we put it on in the last minute in, in Cornwall that year and then decided to, that if we're going to organise swim runs, we should probably go and sample it. Because I think you can – I think our way of doing stuff has always been, you know, learn from other people, good and bad. Yeah. You know, you might go to an event and go, do you know what? They've done this really clever. I really like that idea. Or – do you know what? That just doesn't work for us. And, mm-hmm. you know, no disrespect to anybody else, but yeah. the way things happen, the way thing, you do things is is different. So you just think, oh, do you know what? That doesn't work for us. Or, you know, you learn and you change and you update what you do to, to do that. So we, we decided to go and do Buttermere. And I think I said, as we previously chatted, you know, that was the worst seven hours of my life. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's just horrendous. Yeah. So, um that was. Did you? How, what kind of kit did you have on that on that race? Yes. Yeah, so um, we managed to blag some. I think they were head wetsuits. I don't know how we managed to get them, but we blagged some head wetsuits. Uh, so we had uh, head wetsuits. Um, we used um, ice bug trainers, zero okay. drop ice bugs. Were pretty minimal. They were used predominantly for OCR racing. We had a pair of them, and that was it. And that was part of the problem for us when we did that event. So we trained in the sea. We spent months training for this event because it was a long, old, long, old day anyway. Mm. Uh, and we we trained a lot for it. We'd done the distance, the full distance equivalent on the Cornish coastline two or three mm. times. Um, and then when we got to Buttermere, you know, we had all the same kit. We looked the business. We did it. We looked, we looked professional, i got to say, uh, up until the start of the swim. <laughs> um, we had no paddles no pool boys no tether and whilst my partner was a very good swimmer and it had absolutely no impact on him i nearly drowned um so um that was a, an interesting an interesting introduction to swim run <laughs> yeah that's that was a really that was I, I think it's the toughest well in terms of certainly in terms of height gain that was a really tough course that bottom of course um and the swims I was happy with the swim. Have you ever done Rockman? No, I've not done Rockman yet. It's on the list. It's on the list. (laughs) Yeah. That's got some elevation. 
Yeah, it's got more, hasn't it? It's got yeah. The, the, it, yeah. it wasn't quite as much last year, was it? But it's gone back to the original, I think, that for twenty twenty four. I think they they shortened it or something yes. happened yes. the last couple of years or something. But it's gone back to the big lots of height gain for twenty twenty four. So uh, yeah, I'll have to do that. I don't know how, between us, I don't know how anybody does those flory steps at the end of a 40-kilometre race over that terrain. That's just mm. brutal. Yeah. Absolutely brutal. Yeah. But, but Buttermere was tough. Yeah, definitely. And, um, yeah, for, for teams, like, it was, back in those days, it was the evolution of, of, you just didn't have a clue. It was the same for me and, and my partners. We didn't start with any gear apart from a wetsuit and, and trainers. And then you just you just worked out, didn't you, over a, few, a couple of years, a few races. And it was a good way to learn because, you yeah, know, lessons that are learned hard kind of stick with you. And, and yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's um, yeah. it helps in the end. <laughs> But, uh, so let's have a little so on, look. On, on that race, as I said, we um, go on. No, go on. Finish. Go on. Finish about the race. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so in, in respect to that, you know, we 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 had nothing on that race, uh, and we suffered. Or I suffered. John didn't. I suffered. He just laughed at me the whole way around. Um, but um, we, like you say, it's a development of what kit you use and what you can use. So I think the next race we did was in. A lovely race actually at the, the end of the year in um in roses in spain called the marathon captain yeah. cruise swim run and right. we went we decided to go out there for a little holiday and a race out there and um we used poor boy and small paddles on that race um and we did okay but again you know the the difference between my swimming and john's swimming was quite a challenge for me because he would just go and i'd be you know it's flat flapping around at the back, worried about letting him down or not being able to keep up. So so we did that, and that, that was better. And then I think we went to do a Love Swim run race up in Lamberis and had bigger paddles, pool boys. And the day before the race, we swam in the lake, did a crossing, and then John said to me, do you want to Do you want to use a tether? I'm like, no, I'm not being pulled by anybody. I don't care. I'm not <laughs> being pulled. Uh, I'm, I'm too proud to be pulled around. I mean, you know. And uh, he said, "No, come on, let's try it." So we tried it, and I got to be honest, it was the it was a game changer for us in terms of a team, because all I had to worry about was where that rope was and not get caught up in the rope. And he did the swimming, uh, yeah. and that was just a, an absolute an absolute um, game changer for us. And I think I think we went on to win it that year. Um, the teams, anyway, I think it was. Or, yeah. Actually, were we second? I can't remember. But we did well. We did well. But that was that was largely down to the fact that John was towing my heavy backside around the water yeah it is it is a game changer the the towing i remember uh and it, it not necessarily if you equal swimmers which is very very rare uh you know potentially there's the scope to to not tether but if you've got usually one person is is a slightly better swimmer and uh it does help if, if anyone's starting out in the team's category um, and even if you are equal speed swimmers, there are benefits to being able to have a rest on a swim. You can one year with Paul Skipper, uh, we were we kind of vary. Sometimes I'm better. He's been a faster swimmer this recent couple of years. But in in Khan, we were about the same. So we just alternated. He did, he led the first swim. I led the second one. He led. So it was we were both kind of fresh. Uh, so that worked on the swim. We didn't do so well on the running actually. Transitioning. Between who's leading the swims during a swim is a challenge. Yes. We did that in Rockman uh, with, with Darren. Darren was leading most of the swims. And we were on this one swim. And I, I can't remember why we decided it would be a good idea halfway down, like a 1,500-meter swim down the fjord, that it would be a good idea to swap. But I, I for some reason, we stopped. And I said, do you want me to lead? And he was like, oh, yeah, I don't mind. Because Darren's pretty, pretty chill. He just said, yeah, don't, I don't mind. Um, so. Um, so we, I swam in front, but and he swam behind. But because he had his pool boy between his legs as well, the tether got wrapped around his pool boy. So he was lit, his head was literally on the backs of my knees. <laughs> so oh. it was a bit awkward. He, he just he just stopped me again and went, "I'm going to lead." I was like, "Fine, you lead. I don't care. I don't care." Yeah. But people, yeah. but people think with 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 tethering, people think that it's it's an um, oh, what's the word? What's the best way of politically correctly saying this? People think it's an easy way out or that they're, you know, 
uh, they're being dragged around or they've got the easy ride being at the back. I find swimming behind someone a real challenge. Regardless of whether you're fast or slow, it's a real challenge because you've got to swim really wide. Your arms have got to be wide. You've got to keep an eye on that rope. Um, and it can, it's, it's not easy. You know, no. it's not just being dragged around with a cocktail. It's quite no. difficult. No. It, um, yeah. And if you've got a partner like I have who just swims off in wrong direction most of the time, you've got to, it's almost like riding a horse. You know, you've got some, the tether, you act like a, um, uh, the reins of a horse. So you tow him to one side or tow him to the other if he's going in the wrong direction. Yeah. I hope he yeah. doesn't listen to this. No, I'm, well, <laughs> I'm sure he does. <laughs> it's true. It was being, being, being behind someone, uh, initially, I, I didn't like it at all. And I, I used to much prefer to lead. Uh, now I've kind of learned how to, how to follow in the swims. Um, when I was racing with my sister, who's a much better runner for, than me in terms of yeah, general ability. Um, but swimming is awful. She won't mind me saying that. So I, yeah, that was that was cool. I'd always lead the swims, and it's nice being able to sight. I, I enjoy the sighting aspect of swimming uh, and finding the best line. You know, not that there's loads of scope for that, but um, I've learned over the years to to be led by you know, a couple of times Paul Skipper and, and Simon Griffiths, a race with him up in uh, the Lake District last year, yeah. I think it was, and he was like he's a faster swimmer than me, and he was very focused. He was like. I want to get to the front of the front of the pack here, you know, on the start line, which I love. Brilliant, let's do it, Simon. And off he went, flying off. It, I was behind him. He had he'd gone so fast, he'd forgotten to put his pull boy between his legs, so he was just dangling on the side. Um, but it's still, he was still flying away. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's good. It's there is definitely uh, skills to to leading and following. Um, but yeah, let's John, let's have a look at your races this year now. Twenty fifth of May, Saint Austell. Um, it, that's yeah. the one in Charlestown, is it? Yeah, so that's the original. That's the original swim run. Uh, the, the UK's longest running swim run, if you didn't know. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's uh, that's our biggest swim run in terms of competitors and numbers. And and in 2023, we had uh, it was an amazing race. Um, and an amazing field of competitors from the front to the back, not just the front, but to the front to the back. But the, the front of the race was was very competitive because we had uh, the PH guys come down. They brought Global Triathlon Network to come down and they paired each other up. And then there was a couple of other local teams who were very, very competitive. So we had five or six teams at the front who were nip and tuck all the way. So if only I could have filmed it, it would have been a really good race to have, um, to have taken part in but, or to have watched. Uh, but yeah, that, that's that's the twenty fifth of May. Yeah, cool, cool. I believe did Chris Goodfellow race that one? Yes, he did. Yes, um, yeah. I think he was second or third. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I think there was a bit of skullduggery going on because um, PH came down and they, they'd they'd paired up with the guys from GTN, so they had three of their top athletes, uh, and they'd paired up with the GTN guys, so James, Mark, and Heather. And then Andy Blow was going to go solo. And Andy, Andy's a very good athlete. Uh, and then the, I think a couple of days before, I, I got an email from him going, do you mind if I pair up with someone? I was like, no, I don't care. You know, more the merrier. And I said, who are you pairing up with? Who's What's the name? And there's a local triathlete down here called Neil Eddy. And he is he's one of the best Ironman, amateur Ironman athletes in the world. He's he's up in the top 10 in Kona amateurs. He's, he's an amazing athlete mm -hmm. so Andy Andy raced with him and uh, they won it they won it so right. <laughs> yeah I think there was some skullduggery going on <laughs> good well not good but interesting but just for listeners PH is precision <laughs> hydration uh, and GTN global triathlon yes. yep. network yep. isn't it yeah they don't really know what yep. they're doing the yep. GTN guys um, but you know they're learning well, Heather, Heather's done. Heather's done a few. <laughs> she's, she's done, done the world champs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has done. Yes, yeah, she has done the world champs. Yeah. Um, no, Mark, they're good. Mark they're good. Threlfall, who's a, is a really good amateur triathlete. Um, he's a very good runner and swimmer. Whereas uh, James James Kunana, who was once ranked, I think, fourth in the world for Ironman racing, um, he said to me when he turned up, he went, "I haven't swum for two and a half years or something like that." So he he struggled with the swimming. 
Yeah, no, it's great to see the GTN guys getting involved and um, and spreading the word a bit about Swim Run, actually. They seem to be quite into it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, good, good, good work, team. Now, next up, you've got 13th of July, you've got Roseland. The big, that's the long one, isn't it? The longest you do. Yeah, so um, we started the Roseland, what's this, the four, fourth year of the Roseland. Um, and we always wanted to put on a longer course. And we've been wrecking that part of the coastline for, for a couple of years, trying to find ins and outs. And yeah, that's a, that's a completely different ball game. I mean, the guys that um, won it the second year uh, were a precision hydration team. Uh, right. And they went to the world championships and came in the top 15 in the world championships. Nice. Um, so very good athletes. And it took them five hours, just around five hours to finish it. So it's, it's not a short course or an easy course. Um, and, and, and the way the Roseland works is that it gets harder as the longer the course goes on. So the first bits are not, not easy, but as the race goes on, it gets more technical, more hilly. The swims get longer. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a it's a tough old day that for for anybody, let alone you know the people that win it or the people that last. They're, they're all out for a good day out, but a long day out. Mm. That sounds good. That sounds good. And then um, and then the seventh of September, you've got the Gribbin. Is that right? Yes. Yep. So the Gribbin is a day marker uh, just off Foy. Uh, which is a local town here in here in Cornwall, the Saint Austell, south, south south coast of Cornwall, near Saint Austell. Um So, yeah, it's that's a very similar kind of distance race to the Charlestown one. It's about twenty one, twenty two kilometers total distance with about five k of swimming. Uh, I think I think you know we we talked about this before is that our events are quite swimming heavy. So if people want to swim heavy, swim run, then the Hokey Cokies are definitely that. Um, but yeah, the Gribbons are a stunning. I think it's probably actually the, the prettiest course of the three. Right. Um, but this is only our second year doing it. So we learned things last year from it that we'll implement this year to change. And, and as it's September, the weather's normally pretty good. It's pretty warm. The seas are not really that cold. No. Yeah. <laughs> not as cold as normal. A few yeah. jellyfish around. Yeah. Yeah. So on that. Actually, on the temperature, so you, the May one's probably the cooler water, isn't it? Then your July, a bit warmer, and then September's still probably, probably your 7th of September might be the warmest water, mightn't it? Yeah, it will be. I mean, the, so on the, on the three events, yeah, we've, we've changed the Charlestown event a number of times for various reasons, but we've changed it now permanently to make, on, you go out of Charlestown to the right, and then you come back, and then you go out to the left. And going out, you now run, whereas you used to swim. So you used to swim a one-kilometer swim, and then there was a three kilo, uh, a three hundred meter run, and then a one point seven kilometer swim. So okay. basically, you're doing a two point seven k swim with a slight break in the middle. Yeah. And in May, a lot of people suffer with the cold. Mm. Um, so we've changed that now, so that 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 swim is at the end of the race, which doesn't make it any easier. In fact, it may, probably makes the swim a little bit harder. But it's, you have broken it up with a swim. Uh, with yeah. a run, sorry. Um, mm-hmm. But the Roseland, for example, is is in July. And you think, well, the waters should be warm in July. But the first year we did the Roseland, um, we had people suffering with cold, serious cold. I mm-hmm. I got into the water at one point to do some filming, and I couldn't believe how cold the water was. It was really, mm-hmm. I don't know, you, you get that. You get yeah. that quite a lot. You, know, you just don't know what the water's going to feel like. It, one bay could be warm. The next bay could be freezing cold. There's no rhyme or reason or explanation. It just just happens. Yeah. Or part of the adventure. So uh, what, what <laughs> kind of, yeah, what kind of percentages are, 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 is it swim, swim to run? So I think most of ours are around the 27%, something like that. So Charlestown is, I think it's just under 20 kilometers total distance. This is the long course, 20 kilometers total distance with, I think it's around six kilometers of swimming. So that's quite a big percentage. Uh, mm. The Roseland is is uh, is around twenty seven percent. I think that's got uh, thirty eight kilometers total distance with nine kilometers of swimming over eight swims, nine swims, mm-hmm. and then the Gribbon's probably the less percentage of the lot. That's but that's still in the twenty four twenty five percent 
Okay. Um, so yeah, we we're, 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 we we like our swimming. So we like to think that there's a there's a good percentage of swimming in there. And I think I think my my view personally, and again, this is my view, and everybody's healthy or welcome to do what they want. But I think I think it needs to be for me a good swim run. Uh, I like them to have a lot of swimming in it, good percentage, because it evens yeah. it up. Because a lot of people can run, not everybody can swim. Um, yeah. So it's, it does even it up. Yeah, I think I think it is important to have yeah a good a good amount of swimming. Um, ideally, it's kind of the same amount of time swimming as the same amount of time running. Uh, probably, yeah, is is a nice way to look at it. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah terrain can i guess that depends on how fast you swim though doesn't it yeah and how fast you run yes but... yeah <laughs> i mean a lot of hours are, are, are coastal path so um you know you it is technical running so so the charlestown one for example you've got coast path you've got muddy trails you've got a one kilometer beach run you've got sand um tarmac so you've got everything in there um so you will find it find a bit of everything Last year, we even had cows obstructing the coast path. <laughs> nice. Wildlife. Did you say move over? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to so, end this now. Okay, so that's the swim runs. Do you want, you mentioned earlier off, offline the swim sup run, sup swim run, was it? Yes. Okay, swim, tell us run. about What's, tell us about that one. Alternative triathlon, early year alternative triathlon. So it's a 750 meter swim, uh, a 1.5 k paddleboard, and uh, a six kilometer run. So you can do it as a team of three, two, whatever, or you can mm-hmm. do it solo. But it's a good introduction to the year season for us. Yeah, brilliant. How long do people take up to do the one and a half k? You know, the front of the pack on the paddleboards, roughly. Uh, uh, that's 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 a, a, an interesting thing. So so we've had a team of chaps uh, who have won it every year, um, right. and a lot of that is down to the fact that they're three three good athletes in, in you know, one really good swimmer, one really good runner, and an amazing paddleboarder. Right. So he, I don't know. I, I would I would guess his his is one point five k, ten minutes, something right. like that. He's he's flying around, yeah. especially in good conditions. If it's a bit bumpy, it's a bit more slow, but. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's a fun event. So it's, there's no real rules around, you know, you must do this or you must have this type of board or that type mm. of board. Yeah. Um, last year, it was so bumpy, everybody knelt on their paddle boards. Right. Um, but it's just a fun event, really. It's really actually it's one of my favorites because it's just a good laugh. Yeah, that sounds fun. That does sound fun. Just on that relay kind of point, I've just remembered Roseland this year, you're potentially allowing relay option. Is that right, John? <laughs> yeah. Yes, um, and as of this moment, no one has actually taken us up on that. I don't think. Okay. No, no one's taken us up, up on the uh, on the relay. Um, yeah, it's a relay, so um, it's basically splitting the thirty-eight kilometer course into into twelve and a half, thirteen kilometer legs uh, as a team of three. Um, so you will do each of those. Uh, one person will do each leg, but they will do a swim run, a twelve kilometer swim run past the timing chip and the timing and the bib on a uh, transition zone and, go, and the next person can go on um it was just an idea that we had uh with a friend of ours who said you know oh, we'd like to do it like that because we can't do the 38 kilometers but it'd be nice to do as a team yeah um but yeah i don't it's, we've put it out there i don't know whether many people or anybody will actually enter to do it but um it might be an, an interesting way of seeing the coastline and having mm. a day out with your mates yeah, definitely. So it's it's good that yeah. it keeps everyone's got to do swim run, haven't they? That there's a twelve k swim run. It's like three yes. different. Yeah, yeah, yes. not, yeah. Everybody, yeah. three people are doing the twelve k swim run. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm sure someone will sign up. Maybe maybe a few. Uh, <laughs> it breaks it up. I hope so. But who, yeah. If if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You've got to try these things. Yeah. I often think, yeah. you know, the rules around swim run or is is single solo or pair of two well what's to stop us having a pair a team of four or a team of you know three people um but then i know i know a lot of people find it difficult to get a partner for two let alone a three or a four so yeah yeah we'll we'll hold on to that idea for a little while (laughs) yeah yeah 
Yeah, no, I can imagine. Um, I can imagine that becoming a a thing, mate. Maybe on the right course, the right location. Uh, I could see that. Maybe I don't know. Who knows? But I mean, depending. I mean, the long, the super long distance of of uh, one water race, which is more adventure race style, isn't it? Uh, yeah, the teams of three with a support boat yeah. dedicated. Um, I can see why you know that that kind of works in well it doesn't work for most people because it's <laughs> ridiculously long but but um yeah someone was um someone was talking about it recently this year no last year i think it was uh about an, a uk team mm-hmm. and i was asked if i fancied it and i quite honestly went back and said no <laughs> no <laughs> i just being in the water for that amount of time just just doesn't appeal to me yeah well um i'm i'm putting together a team for 2025 uh i don't know who asked who asked you but uh yeah we'll have details on the teams assembled uh the squad in fact it's more than because someone might get injured right yeah so what people might i'm i'm going to be on the boat (laughs) Unless it goes wrong, <laughs> where lots of people get injured. But um, but yeah, I, I'm put, putting it together a team for GB for 2025. And um, yeah, shout out, guys, if you want to be in the squad, do get in touch. No. Um, <laughs> John, John's <laughs> carried himself out. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'll, out. I'll, I'll, I'll be a water boy. Yeah. I'm hopefully have more data next episode, in fact, or, or certainly in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have more details on that. Um, so stay tuned. So last thing, really, John, is you've heard of British Swim Run. You were involved in some feedback with the whole like the whole setup, and um, well, as all the organisers were across the UK, really, um, as much well, some yeah. were more more involved than others, but everyone's kind of tuned into it. Um, what are you, are you are you excited about that, or how, have you got any thoughts going forward for the future in, in the UK? Really, I think it will be a, a good thing once it gets settled in. I think there's a lot of stuff that needs to be uh, needs to be worked through and, and defined. Um, but the guys that are doing it are doing a really good job at that as, as we speak. So I think it can only be a, a good thing for, for UK swim run to to maybe grow participant numbers and help us all out in terms of races because we do have a a small pool of participants at the moment um you know we're trying to encourage and introduce people to the sport but you get the same old questions you know i don't understand it so hopefully if we can get a uk governing body or or whatever you know uk swim run up and running then then that will help us with that uh, help us to be able to send a message out to people so yeah i think it can only be a good thing um as long as we don't get tied down with rules and stuff like triathlon and things like that. Um, but I don't think that's the way. So we've all fed into that. So that, that shouldn't happen. So uh, no, I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I totally agree. And you can, um, or, or the, the great thing is like the 2023, I know there were pilot um, kind of rankings, but it's all out there from all our races. Uh, anyone who took part in them last year, can see the points from from each race on the website um so yeah that's that's, that's kind of nice for people to see um i know some people like that some people aren't bothered about that at all <laughs> but um it's just another aspect i guess it depends where you are in the ranking doesn't it <laughs> yeah. if yeah. you're near the top it matters yeah true I, it, well, would, it would be really interesting though to see you know get a some form of British Championships going um, because you know various people have lay claim or mention certain names in the breath of the best swim runner in the UK. So it'd be really interesting over over a distance or multiple distance to sort of work that out and see who is uh, who is the best swim runner in the UK. And maybe you know if we could get that sorted and then make that uh, an entry to the World Championships, we could maybe actually start to look at putting British athletes into the world championships and, and focusing those, those teams together to try and go and win it over the yeah. Swedes and the yeah. everybody else. But that yeah. might be a long way off. Yeah. I won't no, be there. Well, so it doesn't I, matter for me. I, <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree. Actually, I've, I've forgotten about that kind of aspect of it really, but yeah, it would be awesome to, to, to put 
you know, br- tried and tested British teams, male, female mixed, uh, into the world champs, you know, and, and yeah, going to win it. Because at the moment, we're not going to win it. Um, but we've got, I think we've got the athletes who could win it uh, with a little I bit could. of, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I think we've got the athletes who can do it. I think there's there's two or three people out there at the moment with the, doing swim run that could probably do. I mean, I think last year, uh, Chris Goodfellow and Piers Valance, they did pretty well. I think they yeah. were top 15 off yeah. the top of my head. Yeah. You know, but even those guys who are who are very quick were quite a way behind the Hugo and Max. I mean, they were they, those boys. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, I feel like... I even they, tied Max's shoelaces together. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> cool. um, it, yeah, he's yeah. still one. Yeah, Didn't still help. One. No, no. Um, but yeah, I think I think for me, it's the athletes who haven't started swim running yet who who will need uh, in order to win. Yeah, they need to start swim running <laughs> uh, in order to, to get on the podium at the, the world champs. And uh, I don't, to be honest, yeah. I don't mind being... Being beaten by Sweden, it's not so bad. But being beaten by France and Germany, it's, it's just you know, it's not good, is it? We're um, long story. You, you don't have to use this. You can cut this bit out. But <laughs> we, me and Darren signed up to do uh, a race, and we're off to Portugal this weekend to do one. Uh, and he he'd been looking at this the, the the swim run awards, and he'd seen this race in Portugal, the swim mm-hmm. run Troya. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I want to do that. I want to do that because I made him do Rockman, which he pretty much hated from start to finish. Uh, I thought I'd better go with him. So we entered this race, and um, we've actually ended up in the My Swim Run Championships European Championship race. Yes, how we're in there, I have absolutely no idea. Um, so we'll probably be last, um, but that's going to be fun if I if I'm actually fit enough yeah. to race. That is. Yeah, so we've ended up in there. Um, that would be interesting. I I guarantee you won't be last, John. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. I think you'll do all right. There's, I think I mean, there's a lot of beach running, the isn't there? Like... Oh, are they good teams? Yeah. Okay, I've not seen yeah. the start oh, yeah. list, so I'm, I'm kind yeah. of just trying to be positive here. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's fine. We will probably be last of all teams, let alone mixed male or female, <laughs> having seen the teams in there. Um, okay. and, and to be fair, there's not that many teams doing the world, the European Championship race. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm I'm suffering with injuries to shoulder and calf. I can hardly run at the moment, so we're, we're just going to go. We ended up in it by accident, mm-hmm. um, so it'll just be a laugh. Yeah, definitely. I, I was looking at that. To, I wanted to do that one actually, but uh, I'm, I've got to work that weekend. But yeah, it looks good. It looks like a great place to go. So good luck with that one. I, 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 I so I'm not convinced about it um not for any other reason that it's too flat for me i like a bit of elevation and it's all sand running and i hate it that's why i don't do the hokey cokey because it's got a kilometer of beach run in it it's just horrendous and it just injures me so yeah i don't know why i'm doing it i actually i tried to persuade him i don't know whether we're allowed to plug other events and stuff maybe but yeah, yeah go i tried to persuade him to do um what's it called Swim Run Man at Verdun Gorge in France. Yeah, that, look, yeah. that that looks epic. Yeah, that looks amazing. I really fancy that next year. Yeah. Um, but the dates have got to work. As I said earlier on, when you're organising nine events across the year, and they've got to work. Yeah. Just now, I know shoes. It's it's one of those topics, and I wasn't going to bring it up actually, but because it's all sand, have you have you considered? Uh, what shoes you wearing, or are you just going with your normal swim run shoes? Well, um, I used to. I, I don't really have a pair of normal swim run shoes. I used to wear Vivo Barefoot. Mm-hmm. Uh, they used to they used to sponsor us, which was great. Um, but that sponsorship partnership ended, um, and I didn't want to particularly spend a huge amount of money on them, um, which they are quite expensive shoes mm-hmm. just to wear in a race. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're not used to wearing zero drop shoes then then they, that's a the challenge in itself so mm-hmm. i went to adidas terex and i've been using them for a while but then i thought i've bought some new shoes for this race i know you should never wear new shoes for a race but i have <laughs> worn them in a bit running on beaches around here so i'm wearing what am i wearing uh innovate trail flies i think they are nice because they're quite wide they've got a wide toe box light yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's my 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 kind of choice. It could be completely the wrong choice, but we'll find out on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've prob- sorry, I was like going to talk, 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 talk about something else slightly as well in kit, but I've just been sent uh, a Zog's swim run wetsuit, um, which they're, they're they're not actually releasing in the UK on a mass release at the moment. But uh, so they sent me one to test, and it's actually really nice kit, really nice kit. The only problem I have with it, and I fed this back to to Zog's, is that there's no back zip. So for me, I overheat when I race. Um, I had a terrible experience in Cannes last year where I just melted um, and it was embarrassingly bad. Um, but, yeah, so so not having that back zip just doesn't allow you to open that back zip and let cold in or cool air through. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not going to wear it this weekend, even mm-hmm. though I was planning to. I think I'd overheat massively in it. Yeah, yeah and it's probably, what, 20-plus degrees out there at least, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> when we went to Cannes in when we went to Cannes in uh, October, it's a very last minute thing. So we'd done Rockman, and then Cannes was up at the end of September, early October. And I was talking to a friend of mine who did the World Championships, uh, but her partner got injured and they had to pull out. So I was chatting to her, and my wife said, "Oh, Jen will go to do Cannes with you. If you, you know, when you're Jen, and Jen went, yeah, I'll go with you." So literally two weeks later, we're on the flight to Cannes. So no training, mm. anything like that. So we went to Cannes. Um, and the night before, it was, so, it was like 36 degrees in Cannes that weekend. Um, and the water was just under 24. And we were the night before, we were looking at the ARC wetsuits going, do we just spend £300 to get an ARC suit just for the one race? Or do we go with our standard ones? Uh, I've never been so hot in my life. Yeah, I mate. had a complete meltdown on the runs. Uh, and, you, you know, with swim run, when you're really hot, you just think, I can't wait to get in the water to cool down. I cannot wait to get in the water to cool down. But in Cannes, you got into the water, and the water felt like an oven, so you never, never cooled down. So yeah, I don't yeah. do hot races. No, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. Um, but well done. That sounds a tough. Uh, um, yeah. So yeah. Well, Innovate's great shoe. Uh, love them, and the Adidas ones are great too. It's funny you should mention the Vivo Barefoot ones. I, I don't personally. It's obviously personal preference. I don't rate them myself for a swim run. Uh, um, but it's it's kind of I find it funny that they were the brand that tried, and they're great in terms of they've supported a lot of events over the years, and the, yep. I think they're right behind Swim Run, and the, the, their um, eco credentials are awesome, and all of that. Um, but they tried to specifically create a Swim Run shoe, and whereas yeah. the brands who just make trail running shoes, fell running shoes, and whatnot. I find those brands, the shoes are better. But I mean, you don't. I feel I almost feel like Vivo need more better feedback because like the, people ask about shoes all the time, and it's whatever you're comfortable in, yeah, you know, blah blah blah. Yeah. But if you look, if people, the performance people, and there are out there, there's a triathlon guys. No, I really want the best shoes. If you look at the guys at the front of the pack at any race, they're not wearing Vivo barefoot generally. Um, mm-hmm. So I think yeah. it, it would be a shame to lose Vivo's. It, it would be better, I think. To, I don't know. It feels like they could create something better that will, that is at the front of the pack. Uh, but I don't know if they want to be a performance shoe. Although the, the marketing blurb that they put out there is, makes out that it's the, the top swim run shoe. So I don't, I don't know. It's just... Well, it's but, but let's, let's be honest. It's the, like you say, it's the only swim run shoe, isn't it? So. <laughs> It is the top swim run shoe in that respect. I mean, I, I wore them for about three years. I wore them at the Isles of Scilly, um, and I've worn them at other races. And when I was wearing, because uh, I, I had a few pairs of Vivo Barefoot that I used to wear around the house or to work and stuff. If you're used to them, I absolutely loved running in them. I did. I loved them. But as soon as, as soon as um, you know, you stop wearing them around the house and you just wear them for races. I mean, we did one of those Keener's Mustard races, and I. Again, I suffered on the run, but I, I've worked out since that that was because I wore the Vivo barefoot and I hadn't worn them for a year at all and right. just put them on for a race thinking I'd be okay. And I just suffered. Um, but Salomon, Salomon used to make a, an amphibian shoe. Yes. Um, but they've stopped making that. They've stopped doing mm-hmm. it. And I, I actually chatted to someone from Salomon at the weekend and, you know, he said, it's just, it's just not viable. But mm. until Swim Run becomes a, 
bigger sport where we've got thousands and thousands of participants, which I hope we get to, uh, you know, then you might start to get shoe providers to to get involved and we might start to get some specific swim run shoes. I mean, I've, I've often thought there'd be a great market for a shoe that has a little flipper that pops out of the front uh, that as you, when you're swimming so that it helps you swim. Yeah. <laughs> I've got quite a few ideas with developing tools and toys for this. Yes. Um, but I can't say too much. No, no, no. <laughs> it's all uh, confidential. So, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, yeah, the, at the moment, guys, don't don't worry too much about shoes. It, it, as, as kind of we've said it, there isn't a need either from a commercial point of view or from an actual need that for, for a swim run shoe uh, because fell running and running in the British trails is, is basically running through water all the time and puddles and, and the Adidas ones, the, I think the Speed Ultra, the ones I've used recently, are awesome for, for, for me in yeah. swim run uh, and the yeah. Innovate ones I've used for years before that. and So, yeah, there we go waffle on about shoes forever <laughs> but it's, the same, it's, the same. But it's the same as all kit though isn't it people go well, what kit do you wear what kit do you wear and i i just say to everybody it's personal preference yeah. you know i could tell you what i wear but actually you know you might find it's rubbish what i wear for you but um you know we say to people who are coming to do our first swim run oh do i have to buy a wetsuit if you've got an old swimming wetsuit cut the arms and legs off it's, yeah. that's basically in, for all intents and purposes, what a swim run suit is, it's slightly different, obviously, but you know, you can do that and get away with it. But we've had people that have done that hokey cokey in Charlestown in full five mil surf suits and done the whole run. And you think, wow. oh, yeah. you nuts, but you know, yeah. you can do it in anything, you don't have to have all the flashy kit to go and do it. If you want to carry on and do it and you know, progress and try and do lots of racing, then you might want to buy and make yourself comfortable but if you're only doing one to try it and have fun then yeah you can kind of get away with anything i mean we get we do get we've got a lot of open water swimmers down here who are you know all year round 12 months of the year swimmers skin swimmers and they will refuse to put a wetsuit on so we get quite a few of them that, that, that have done the hokey cokey in, in just shorts and t-shirt yeah you know so yeah there's a anything goes yeah personal personal <laughs> preference for sure which is brilliant. Yeah, it's one of the great things about swim run, isn't it? That flexibility. Yeah. So there we go, John. It's been great chatting, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm trying to make it so I can come to Saint Austell uh, on the 25th of May uh, because I, I really want to do one of your races. So I'll hopefully see you there, but we'll, we'll see. Well, fingers crossed. Think- All right. Well, good luck. Good luck in Portugal, and uh, whatever happens, oh, have brilliant. a nice steak, or if well. If you're a meat eater, um, but <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, uh, I, do... I probably should say that I, you know, in return, in return, I'd like to come and do some of yours, but the, the dates just conflict with oh. swims and stuff. It's just horrendous. I know, I know. I know. Your, your Gribbon one is uh, the seventh of September. It's the day before the the Abu Dhabi one, Dovi X, on the eighth of September. Maybe some people are doing a back to back there, uh, seven and eight, and then bit of a journey. <laughs> yeah, tally, t- yeah, yeah, a bit of a journey. Yeah. Uh, so yeah but hopefully we'll see each other sometime this year John and uh, thanks for coming on and hopefully yeah, enjoy 2024 thanks for having me thank you cheers Mike thank you. Okay, thank you for listening, guys, to John Yelland from Mad Hatter Sports and myself having a good old chin wag, which continued after I pressed stop recording. Um, so there we go, we had some off record chat. Um, nothing too exciting, though. Don't worry. Uh, what else? I do want to shout out to the We Swim Run team members on the My Swim Run Championships Friendship Battle. Uh, we have Peter Jervis. Rianne Roxburgh, David Molinario, Gary Cartwright, and myself. That's five of us, uh, all in the team. There's room for five more if you want to join. Uh, I'll link to it in the show notes, as I say. And if you're in Liverpool or Abu Dhabi and want to train, give me a shout on Instagram or whatever, and maybe we can train together. Uh, I'm using it to kind of motivate the old training and, and trying to beat some of these European countries. Uh, there's a lot of German teams, a bit of French action there, some Dutch. Um, yeah, 
let's get involved let's get out there what else oh yeah basically anything i mention I, I, you can generally find it on the website we swim uh, somewhere uh, that's it for now guys hopefully it might it's getting into busy, a really busy season so the podcast might be dropping to fortnightly um let's just see how things pan out in the next couple of weeks bye for now